Did you know there's a cool way to write CSS like this? Don't underestimate it, because it can handle extremely complex design problems. In a very easy way. For example, here I am having a list of elements. When performing a hover on an element, of course, what anyone can do with CSS is to create a transform effect for the hovered element. But here, there are many elements lying around that change. Each element changes differently. To handle this problem, many people will think that JavaScript must be used. But it's not true. With just a few short lines of CSS in the style I mentioned, we will solve this problem in a simple way while ensuring the cleanliness and brevity of the code. If you find the video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to continuously update many interesting videos every day. Thank you everyone very much. Here I have a class list. Inside will contain many items. Each item contains an image, and this is what is displayed on the screen. Now, I will use CSS to perform transformations when the mouse hovers over the element for each item inside the class list. I declare the transition attribute to specify the time at which it is transitioned. And with filter, by default, brightness will have a value of zero to cover the entire item with black. When a user hovers over an element, then that element will change its brightness value from zero to one so that the image inside can be seen. I want the transformation to be more diverse. So in class list, I declare transform style preserve 3D to allow child elements to move in 3D style. And the magnitude of the Z axis will be 1000 pixels. So with the item being hovered, in addition to changing the filter value, I use the transform property to move it along the Z axis by 200 pixels. Perhaps coming here is something that most people can do. So now, let's move on to the more difficult step, creating different effects for other elements. To create a transformation for the first item to the right of the item being hovered, first I will call the item being hovered then point to the next item. But if written like this, the system will understand that we are looking for an item that is a child of the hovered item. So we will need to add a plus sign here. The plus sign is used to indicate that the location it wants to find is right to the right of the element being hovered. And for this element, I also change the filter brightness value so that the image can be seen but will be a bit dark. So it understands that the item we need to find is the item next to it. I continued using the transform property to change the translate's value and rotate it along the y-axis by 40 degrees. And it's been working fine. If I now replace the item with an asterisk, what will happen? Everything still works normally. So what is the principle of the asterisk in this case? The asterisk character is used to expand the recognized element types immediately after the hovered item class instead of just pointing to a certain next item class. And in specific cases, if we know for sure that the next element, whatever it is, will be completely valid, we can use the asterisk character. To apply it, let's try to find the second item to the right of the item being hovered. First, I point to the position of the item being hovered. Use plus and asterisk characters to point to the next item location. But this is still not the position I want. So I continue to use the plus and asterisk characters to get to the next item. So. This is the location I need to find. For this item, I also changed the filter value so that I can still see it, but it's more blurred. Use transform to change its position and rotation. Yes, that's it. From here, we can derive a meaning that every plus and asterisk character will represent a position. So I have to find the third position right after the hovered item. We will need to use the plus and asterisk characters three times. With this item, I also change the attribute values like the previous elements, so we can easily create transformation effects for a series of items right behind the item being hovered. So can we do the same with the items to the left of the hovered item? If the plus character represents the next item to the right. So is there any character that represents the previous position on the left? The answer is no. Exactly. In CSS, there is absolutely no character that represents the preceding position. But that doesn't mean we can't control items in this position with CSS. Let's look at the following example. I will try to find the position on the left closest to the hovered item. First, I will call any item to check if this is the item I'm looking for. I will use selector has. As we know, the plus and asterisk characters will represent the element position on the right. 
So the meaning of this conditional sentence is: find an item whose right position is the element being hovered over. Right. At this point, I will also change the filter and transform values to create a changing effect for it. Isn't it great? Has is an extremely interesting selector in CSS. Based on that, you can make as many elements transform as you like with just one hover without using JavaScript. In cases like this, using JavaScript will make the problem even more complicated and time-consuming. Just remember the following rule: the combination of a plus symbol and an asterisk represents an element to the right. But when using has, it will represent the elements on the left. One thing to note is that we only use an asterisk when ensuring that the next element is definitely a valid element. Recently, my channel has been accepted by more people. I feel very happy and want to share more of my knowledge with everyone. If you find the content good, please like and subscribe to the channel to update more interesting videos every day and motivate me to make more useful content. I also want to receive everyone's comments and suggestions on the topic for the next videos. Thank you very much, everyone. See you in the next video.